Hi everyone. Hey, this is the, the first of many videos we're going to create that are more of a technical end of videos. My goal and my objectives in these, just so you know, uh, is basically a couple different things. Um, that I want to teach you technically what's happening inside your camera so that it helps you understand become a better photographer. Um, the other thing is, is, is get better creative control of your camera so you can reduce editing. You hear me talk about that all the time. My belief is the more time we spend uh, out shooting, the more time we spend with our families, the better photographers we become, uh, the less time we spend in front of a computer. It's a great thing. So I want to start out with something really basic that a lot of people don't really understand or it's never been explained to them in a real simple way to understand. We're going to talk about your sensor and how it works and what the difference between a full frame and what people call a cropped frame camera or FX versus DX if you're, if you're a Nikon shooter, to give you an example. What I'm going to talk about first is you have to understand how light travels into your camera. Um, when you look at a lens, it's round of course, right? Well, the light that's going into your camera that goes down to where the, center, the, the, the actual sensor is, is actually cylindrical. And so it's a round form of light going through that lens. But what they try to do is, is your, your sensor itself is rectangular shaped inside. And I'll, I'll give you a couple of specs real quick. Um, a full size sensor is basically 36 by 24 millimeters. It's a CMOS sensor. And what that means is what a full frame means is they're maximizing the surface area of that cylindrical light that goes into your camera. They're maximizing that area, that surface area. And so what happens with this is that you get a wider angle view. So if I put a 50 millimeter lens on a cropped frame camera, I get a view that's like this, a narrower view. And if I put it on a full frame camera, which is equivalent to a 35 millimeter film camera, then I'm going to get a wider angle like this. Now, why does that matter to you? Well, what that actually does is it creates it's better for landscapes. Sometimes it's better for portraits, and I'll explain to you why here in a moment. But what that does is that's a full frame camera, so you're picking up a little bit bigger area. Now, inside that, if you see this small rectangle here, that's the crop frame sensor. Now, in a crop frame sensor, so you actually have a smaller surface area, if that makes sense. By having that smaller surface area, without getting real technical, what that does is it magnifies your lenses. So you're, you're picking up a smaller surface area. The same amount of light's hitting that sensor. It's just a smaller area. And what that does, so just so you know, in an icon, it's a 1.5 crop factor. So to give an example, a, a 500 millimeter, 200 to 500 millimeter. 500 millimeter my Nikon on a full frame camera is equivalent to 500 millimeters. When I put it on to a crop frame camera, it's equivalent to a 750 millimeter lens. And so what this does, as a nature photographer, that gives me more distance. It brings the animals in closer. And so why would somebody shoot a full frame and why would somebody shoot a, a crop frame? Well, an easy way to explain this is this. Is here's a full frame sensor and here's a crop frame sensor. They're both 16 megapixels as you can see, right? And, and of course this is not a real view of this, it's 16 million megapixels, but we're going to break this down to simple understanding terms. But a full frame sensor, as you can see, the megapixels themselves are bigger. When they're bigger like that, what they do is they're better in low light. Um, you'll hear people say, well, they pick up more light, they pick up more, s that's really not true. They're both picking up the same amount of light, the difference is in on your full frame, again, you're maximizing that field of view of the lens. But when they're bigger like this, without compressing them, you get better low light capabilities. What I mean by that is you get less grain and distortion at high ISOs in low light with a full frame with lower megapixels. When you go into a crop frame sensor like this, and we have the same 16 megapixels, those megapixels have been compressed down. When they're compressed like that, what it does is it creates more grain and distortion in high ISO numbers. And just so you know, there's no way around that. Um, I've actually talked to the engineers from all the manufacturers. They have never figured out a way to get past this. So when you're looking at a cropped frame camera and you're trying to buy one, uh, something that's going to sound silly is try to find the lowest megapixel cropped frame camera that you can. You're going to have better low light capabilities. And what I want you to know is that you'll hear these cameras that are talking about, hey, it's got 24 megapixels, it's got great low light capability. You have to be really aware of something. That means they're using software in the camera to do that. What the problem with that is, you guys, is it softens your photo. It's just like noise reduction software after the fact. Um, so if you do have noise reduction in your camera, my suggestion to you is turn it off. Th this is where I tell people, if you're shooting really low light and you have to get rid of some noise or grain in your image, actually use software to do that after the fact. You have more control and it doesn't soften the photos quite as bad as what it does in the camera. So when you're out shopping, it's going to sound funny, but in the full frames, it's still best to go lower megapixels. 
And by the way, if you watch my D500 video, the reason I switched the, Nikon, the new Nikon D500 to another crop frame, even though I was shooting two full frames before, is I wanted distance out of my lenses, but I wanted a low light capability camera. Nikon found what you would want to call the, uh, the sweet spot of a of sensor. They went to 20.9 megapixels, not 24 like all their other crop frame cameras, 20.9. And what I've noticed is, is if you've watched the other video, that I get the same low light capabilities in that camera as I do my D750. If it's not exact, it's so close, I can't tell much difference. So I hope this helps you understand sensors a little bit more. Um, if you have any questions, any problems, um, give us a call, ask questions, email us questions if you need to. Please share this on Facebook. Sh please share this on your pages. Um, we would love to have people follow us on these videos. Uh, thank you very much, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Bye-bye. Hey everyone, for all of you that stuck around a little bit of extra material, I, I forgot to mention something in the video earlier. Um, when we're talking about crop frame versus full frame, I quite often hear people say, well, if I shoot a full frame with higher megapixels, I can just crop down, blow that picture back up, and get the same results as a crop frame camera. That's true in some senses, but there is one thing that it can't do. Uh, one of the reasons I switched back to a crop frame, and after extensive testing, I can tell you this is how it really works, is that when I focus on an animal like this in a cropped frame camera. Since it's magnifying the, less, the lens itself, my autofocus system locks on much more precisely right where I want it to be, and it's much sharper than if I try to take a full frame and crop it down. Now you have to really crop to see that, but it is quite different. And so that's one of the reasons I shoot a crop frame camera. And again, like this was actually shot with a crop frame camera, but I moved the focus point from here over to the animal as I talk about so I don't have to crop it. But you know, in a full frame camera, we'll give you a burst. If this was shot with full frame, uh, compared to like a crop frame camera, the picture may only be like this big. And so all this, a lot of this would be gone um, if we were to shoot at the same focal length on both. Hopefully that uh, helps you understand that a little bit better. But, but that's what I wanted to share with you is that with a crop frame camera, I do notice that my focus system, especially if it's something out quite at a long distance, I get more accurate focusing and faster focusing than if I shoot a full frame. So hopefully that helps. Thanks very much. Bye.